this is the the funny side of Hollywood that uh, I get a kick out of because it is very much a family business for a lot of these people. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their, you know, you'd be surprised how many actors and actresses are related uh, you, Makes because sense, they have so. different stage it's names. It's like a big <laughs> high school that everyone hangs it, out at. Yeah. It, it absolutely is. Uh, it says, after split up from Lisa Bonet, is that how you pronounce her last name? Benet? Yeah. Uh, Jason Momoa is hyping up Ka uh, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Uh, so the uh, the Aquaman actor is still all purrs about Kravitz. Fantastic. Whoever See wrote that her one. stepdad. Stepdad. Mm um, he's closer in age to her mm -hmm. than he is to his Ooh, wife. He was a cougar cub? What do you call that? Yes, he would have been. He's a cub. He would have been What's a cub. What's the technical term here? It, he's a cub. Miracle, we need your. We, Miracle's I, the one I, who would know this stuff. He's a cub. Okay. And so, so he was that a cub. Make, that makes yeah. Lisa Bonet a cougar. This what, is, do you, yeah. what do you call the next level after cougar? Dead. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Good to know that you get like either uh, hot and young, cougar, or dead. Mm -hmm. uh, that's depressing. Well, like imagine like a female beauty standards are very high. <laughs> exactly. But imagine you're a granny and like you're like over 80 and like you're still trying to be a cougar, but like the wrong pounding, like you die. <sighs> okay. It's too much for me. Sorry. You cannot, you cannot show me a picture of Jason Momoa and tell me that only female beauty standards are high. Okay. That guy looks, <laughs> that guy looks like a, uh, uh, Jason Momoa coming in. She makes that voice every time we do And she wants him to play every role. <laughs> I just want to do that. Just like, to take you know, him who, off. you know who she wants to play Iron Man? Jason, Jason Momoa. Momoa. Forget who should, Tom Cruise. Who should be the, the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? Jason, Jason Momoa. Momoa. <laughs> Look, I who should it. play the cars in cars? Jason Momoa. If you suggest him enough times, he probably will be one of the things. I love this strategy. Yeah, yes. exactly. Well, it's also funny. So this is kind of off topic, but related to him. So you know how Girl Scouts, they sell the cookies like each year and there's the Mimosa ones. So one of the Samoas. Samoas. Thank Samoas? you. He is Samoan, I believe. Yeah, but but they're like the coconut ones. The coconut chocolate ones. Somebody correct us um, what they're called. But basically, one of the Girl Scouts, she had a strategy. She wanted more people to buy her cookies. So she did a printout of Jason Momoa and said, buy these Jason Momoa Samoas. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. And basically, she sold a lot of these cookies. But then she had to take them down because it wasn't regulated. Yeah, it was like uh, misappropriation of his image. Yeah. Jason Momoa responds to Girl Scout who used uh, <laughs> who used shirtless photo of him to sell cookies. When Good was this? Uh, 2019. Yep. It looks like Jason Momoa finally caught wind of the viral Girl Scout video cookie Girl Scout cookie selling scheme involving him and a rebrand of the popular cookie Samoas. Thank you. Charlotte Holmberg, a fifth grader from Colorado, upped the ante on Girl Scout cookie season and decided to go get creative with her technique to become the top cookie CEO of her troop. This woman's go. This girl's going places. Let's She's go. going entrepreneurial. She spirit. is going places. Well, this right? is why I love the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts because they actually like encourage kids to be an entrepreneur. And sorry, like it was off topic, but that's what popped up in my mind. Well, what I did was he like, say? How did he respond to this? Like, he was really been. flattered by it. No. Mora finally responded publicly about his special appearance. He says, "I love Girl Scout cookies. I was waiting to get some free ones. That man has never <laughs> eaten. You do not look like that and eat Girl Scout cookies. You don't." <laughs> he's lying. He probably eats them and then works out for four days. Yeah, he's yeah. like, he's like, I, it was like, do they, do they have keto Girl well, Scout cookies? I've known some like NFL players who say like they don't, some of them don't work as nutritionists through their team and I was surprised yeah. by that but like one of the things I've heard from like student athletes and professional athletes is mm -hmm. like they just have to eat so many calories to sustain their lifestyle like yeah. I imagine he is also have you seen the Michael Phelps one that is like insane how many calories he has each each day mm -hmm. athletic uh, build and screen build are not the same it's like, yeah. like yeah. swimmers he build he probably versus, works yeah. out mm -hmm. all the time yeah. Yeah. to maintain it which means that like even if it's not the healthiest stuff like he has a, enough of a calorie deficit he has to fill i would love his cheat uh his cheat day is just girl scout cookies from morning to uh, <laughs> but just imagine him like most of his work cheat meal not cheat i think day. the quest mm -hmm. bar there's one quest bar that has like it's chocolate yeah. and coconut and it mm -hmm. tastes like samoas to me oh that one's good we have more if you want some mm -hmm. so it says jason momoa and lisa benet shocked us all a month that me yep it is that you're getting a phone call uh shocked us all a month ago and the couple announced that they are getting divorced after nearly five years of marriage and 16 years together overall mm -hmm. ben shapiro how old is he he's only uh you miracle you want to look it up uh jason momoa uh, yeah she's she pulls out like a list she's got all his facts <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, Jason Momoa. Think, do they I have think, any kids? They have kids. I think together, he's right? my age. No, uh, they don't have kids. Uh, I, I believe he's my age, but let's find Wait, out. Wait, so they shocked the world? You can sorry. So nineteen seventy nine. So he's my brother's age. He's like forty two. Forty two. Mm-hmm. Um, so it says that they shocked the world when they split up after sixteen years together. So he would have been thir- he would have been in his early twenties when they got together. Twenty six, it looks like. Uh, it says, uh, but over it says the duo. It says, I'm sorry. It says after nearly five years of marriage and sixteen oh, wait, years yeah, together. Oh yeah, they do overall, have kids. Sorry, but Correction. just because the duo are going their separate ways, that doesn't mean their beautiful family has to fall apart. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Momoa has been a proud stepfather to Benet's first daughter Zoe Kravitz, and is continuing to support her as she continues to work uh, in the world of. DC movies so they're both part of this uh, of these franchises mm-hmm. uh, the world will soon see Zoe Kravitz take on the role of Catwoman uh, in the Batman and Jason Momoa is as hyped as we are the Aquaman actor took to his Instagram to share a poster of the DC comics upcoming movies saying how proud he is even though he's currently going through a divorce with her mother that's got to be so weird like uh, I, it was like my parents separation was like nowhere near like as like I was much younger right Mm -hmm. but I can't imagine it being so inextricably linked to your business Uh, I don't know I mean she how it depends on how old she was when they got together and stuff like that like you know if she lived at home with him and was still like yeah. well you moved out but we're still carpooling to work like mm-hmm. i could see being different but she's she, older I mean, and she clearly ca- still cares yeah, yeah. Uh, it says i think people like i think there are a lot of step parents who do a good job of like yeah. if it doesn't work out maintaining a relationship with their step uh travis barker has like uh he, his ex-wife had a daughter from a previous mm-hmm. relationship and he only refers to her as his daughter like oh. she was at all of his engagement stuff with with courtney like he is very much like still it, it seems clear that he decided to fill i don't know if she has contact with her biological father but mm-hmm. he decided to fill the role and he like maintains it to a t and yeah. to the point where like sh- he just includes her in everything and i think that's like very honorable that mm-hmm. is very honorable it says momoa said that he can't wait to see the batman along uh i like how he uh, he's probably already seen it mm-hmm. <laughs> he's probably at a test screening uh to see the batman along with the passing along with passing along the movie's upcoming release date so it was a promotional thing he's like i can't mm-hmm. wait to see it Again, uh, and then puts the release date. He says he even used the adorable nickname he gave for her, Zozo Bear, mm-hmm. where he dro- uh, which he has dropped in the past. Zoe Kravitz commented, "I love you," with I think nine U's. Mm-hmm. So that's they're buddies. They're very, they're very, st- they're still friends. In the comment section, something tells me these two are going to be just fine and remain close, despite Momoa's split from Lisa Bonet. Uh, oftentimes there's an expectation that just because a couple is no longer together or in a divorce uh, or a divorce is in the mix suddenly everything would be different between the parties involved it doesn't seem like there's much drama between uh, Momoa and Benet who's released a joint statement about the state of their relationship it seemed like a very like prepared statement for like maybe it had been brewing for a while (laughs) Uh, and I always think about these things because my family was very uh I, I don't even it's so sticky trying to explain how things happen after divorces right mm-hmm. like uh, I, I can't imagine like having to put business and family dynamics together in the same in the same category it'd be mm-hmm. very difficult for me yeah um, it says Lisa Bonet and Momoa and Mo, yeah you were right and Momoa also share two children together so the families are linked forever yeah mm-hmm. uh, even if she's not even if Kravitz is not his, mm-hmm. his child so they are likely to go in, to, to remain close as they continue to co-parent Zoe Kravitz is Bonet's first child whom she had with Lenny Kravitz prior to her divorce from the rock star back in 1993 this is Momoa's first known divorce as the pair wrote in their announcement that they're freeing each other to quote to be who they are learning to become here uh, here's more from their January statement and it just gives it says mm-hmm. we've all felt the squeeze and changes of these transformational times a revolution is unfolding and our family is no exception feeling and growing from our seismic shifts occurring our devotion unwavering to this sacred life our children teaching our children what's possible living the prayer may love prevail mm-hmm. jnl wow i just that's very flowery yep for uh an end of a relationship statement mm-hmm. uh so uh, i mean these new age hippie parents you know i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah but the damn hippies i just hope that his son grows up to look like jason momoa of course you do <laughs> I hope his do- uh, his stepdaughter grows up to look like Lenny Kravitz. No, I'm just kidding. I don't care. <laughs> no, because like his son is halfway there, halfway there with well, the he does have half hair. the genetics. Yeah, he was in he was in Baywatch, Jason Momoa. Yeah, he was in the original. Like so, just think I didn't about, realize that he'd been very young at the time. 
uh, I want to talk about, I'm, I'm going to skip Brittany today. We're going to talk about Tony Hawk opening up about this Bam Margera incident because uh, I had a conversation with a friend tonight, or tonight, yesterday, uh, about this and says, Tony Hawk has opened up about his old friend Bam Margera's recent issues on Jackass Forever. I'm bringing this up because also this movie's coming out this weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, Are we and, watching it? Me and Miracle had a, uh, a one dollar wager that I think you're going to win. Yeah. Uh, if forecasts are any are, are any indication about what would uh, win the box office this weekend, whether it would be Jackass Forever or Moonfall, the new Roland Emmerich uh, sci-fi yeah. uh, disaster. Which movie. one are we watching? Which one did you guys bet on though? I bet that. on Moonfall. But, I well, she she bet Jackass Forever. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I guess I'll take Moonfall. Um, it just it shocks me that they put these movies like knowing how much it costs to make a Roland Emmerich movie it's hilarious to me that it's going to lose out to a movie that probably cost a quarter of that to yeah. make uh, but I think you're right that this one that one's so, going to win this weekend but it, they mm -hmm. talk about basically Bam Margera was originally going to be in this movie and then he was cut because he's still having substance abuse issues mm -hmm. which of course hits close to home for me uh, and part of it is that uh, it makes your work life oftentimes untenable like you cannot work because you're straight you know your your personal struggles become too much mm -hmm. uh and it interferes in every aspect of your life and that seems to be what happened here and it's just it goes into what he thinks about it, it says for those who are unaware the pair's friendship meaning hawk and, and margera mm -hmm. uh, goes way back to when margera was making an appearance in the third installment of tony hawk pro skater however margera has recently removed from the set of the latest jackass installment in which he tested positive for adderall according to his attorney eric george i don't even remember that part he could have been prescribed to that but they would have had a no drugs clause with mm -hmm. him because of how volatile he'd been in the pack in the past i also think it's hilarious anytime hollywood wants to like it always becomes a business in the end like uh i'm sure a lot of these people are on a lot of stuff when they're making this stuff when they're making mm -hmm. these things but mm -hmm. as long as they don't cause problems they don't really care yeah uh, they that's only true of not just like these guys, but I think of all a lot industries, of actors. Mm -hmm. yeah. they only care. Yeah, no, I'm saying of all industries, like they don't care until it affects the bottom line. Mm -hmm. It says uh, he told Lad Bible, uh, "I can't speak to the studio. I can't speak for Vam. I just think that he became a liability to them." Uh, I think that he needed some help. I think it's bad timing in both respects in that he needed this kind of help when they were in the middle of shooting their movie. Mm -hmm. Hawk added, maybe if that timeline had shifted a bit, it would have worked out for them. But I don't really feel, I don't really have great details on it. I just wanted to see Bam get better and I want to see him be in a good place. Uh, healthily, mentally? Healthy mentally. Okay, I thought it said healthily. Uh, there, there will be plenty of other opportunities for him film-wise or whatever, but most important for him is to get healthy for his family, and that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. But like in situations like this, especially, uh, I'm guessing that going back to this environment is very, would be very much a trigger for somebody like that. Uh, not just the physical uh, ramifications of what mm -hmm. happens if one of these stunts goes wrong, but it reminds him of a time in his life probably when the drug use was at its most prevalent or when it started. So he was removed from the set because he tested positive for Adderall. Mm -hmm. Was that a condition of his contract in the movie that he yeah. had to be sober? Because he has had problems in the past. Because he's a liability. Yes, because mm -hmm. he's a liability. Has it's, he commented on it publicly? It says Margera launched a lawsuit last year against Paramount. Knoxville and director Jeff Tremaine have said that he was wrongfully fired... Uh, and set, uh, against the the studio and then also against the director and Johnny Knoxville saying that he was wrongfully fired from the film. Uh, he believes he endured phys psychological torture while working with the team. In a video that was posted and then dele deleted earlier last year, Margera alleged Jackass put me through hell on fucking wheels for a, le for a year and a half. He alleged Paramount Pictures forced him to take multiple breathalyzer tests, give urine samples, and filmed uh, him taking antidepressants in order to make the film. Mm -hmm. Like... I mean, this is what happens when, like, if you are good, if you get out of, uh, like, like drug rehab on the condition of like parole, mm -hmm. you go to, if you've got a parole officer, you have to go take urine tests. You yeah. have now the, the taking the antidepressant thing is crazy. Like, well, they filmed him taking, taking it them. like he took it already to and prove they just, that he took it. Is that, are you sure that's what they uh, mean? I'm assuming that's what they mean here. Or it's do like, they mean like he was taking it? And they were like, okay, we're going to do some B-roll of you taking your antidepressants. And he's like, no, I don't want that in. No, it says mm -hmm. in order to be in the film. Mm -hmm. So it would have been a condition of his employment. But again, like condition because they wanted the storyline if he's on antidepressants or is it to prove it? That's just not clear to me in the way it's, uh, it's, it's uh, I'm guessing it says it says Paramount forced him, not the director forced him. Yeah. I'm guessing this is about the behind the scenes stuff 
uh, involved because uh, they wouldn't really have anything to do with the movie. Uh, in, an, in an interview with Variety, Johnny Knoxville says it wasn't an easy decision to reduce the screen time for his longtime pal. We wanted uh, we wanted him to. Uh, we want him all throughout the movie, but unfortunately, that's not the way it worked out, he said. It's really heartbreaking. I love Bam. We all love Bam. He's our brother, you know? You just hope that he takes it upon himself to get the help he needs because all we all care about him a lot. I've been in his position before. I mean, it, it never affected my work in the same way, but I eventually had to uh, make the decision between getting help and continuing at my job and mm. eventually had to make the decision to enter rehab and get help. But uh, it's just crazy because he's still in the movie. Like he has mm -hmm. like, they just, I think he has like one scene. And I imagine that for him, uh, he also like down here, it says he claims that Jack has caused his addiction, addiction and drug issues. That's somebody who clearly hasn't found that hasn't found themselves yet. You cannot hold other people, you know, however much you believe you have to take personal responsibility for your actions at a certain part or else you can't really get sober. Right. Uh, because it's linked to your ability to place the blame on other people and, and look for ways out. Yeah. So I, I just uh, I, I thought it was an interesting thing because somebody like Tony Hawk, who's been a, a staple in these industries for so long, is clearly a businessman and has uh, navigated these industries, which are very much party atmospheres. And at least I don't know how if they're much like that nowadays. Mm -hmm. These are all corporate businesses mm -hmm. now as much as they want to portray an image. Uh, I just think it's crazy the amount of stuff they put him through to try and get him through this movie <coughs> but also that they could make more money off him. And he wasn't able to mm -hmm. come through because he's still still struggling. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, I can't imagine having to do that. Like, like now, where I'm at now, like in being in such a, pl a better place in my life, I just can identify so heavily with what that guy's going through. Like, it just yeah. kind of breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Like, you, like I would never want either of you or anyone here to have ever seen me like when I was at my worst. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not. It was not a pretty sight. Um, so I can, I you know, I can Do really. It more. resonates yeah. with me. Not not necessarily. I guess empathy is more. Mm -hmm. uh, we I talked about it. it once, like um, yeah. how you're talking about your previous relationships and you felt yep. so terrible for them. Yep. So, yeah, I just don't want like anybody to experience that, especially for you, because you advocate against it. So. Uh, until you see someone mm -hmm. go through it, it, it's hard to really um, understand. <coughs> uh, yeah. like, not even like go through it yourself, but until you actually like see somebody you're close to that you have uh, the um, the reason to be around on a daily basis and mm -hmm. are really invested in their life, where they're going, like a family member, best friend, uh, spouse, relationship. Mm -hmm. Until mm -hmm. you see somebody go down that path, it really is truly hard to understand how horrific it is to watch yeah. somebody fall apart like that. Yeah. So I feel bad. I feel bad for him, but hopefully he does get his stuff together. Cause, and I want to talk about it just because the movie's coming out this weekend, so it's going to yeah. be interesting. So are we going to watch it this weekend? I want to go question. see Moonfall, but that's, um, that's just me. Is Moonfall premiering the same day yeah, as... the fourth. Well, we're, it's up to Chris because Chris is the final say. That is true. So we will, we will see. Watch Chris say jackass, and I win that automatic Oh, I guarantee one. you. He, <laughs> Chris, I, I don't see Chris caring about Moonfall. I, I see Chris maybe wanting to go see jackass yeah watch him go like yeah jackass and i'm like yes what if, one made, dollar, what if he makes you guys go to both like back to back that would be that would be he's awesome like, west side story he's like we're going to see west side story chris is like really into musicals <laughs> he doesn't tell anybody but he's got a secret thing for like watching musicals by he's himself so up in, up in his in his room so i yes. hope that's a joke well it could be true you never know i don't know hannah claire is it true I have no idea. Mm -hmm. She's like, I can't comment on that. I'd have to research, do some reporter. I'd have to, you know, interview. Exactly. I, I, I can't say. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.